it's beeping it's going to get on my nerves what's up welcome back to mina's daily dose my name is mina and thank you for joining me today if you are new here thank you for clicking on this video and if you're already part of the fam hello how are you and thank you for still being here with me all right all right so it's been a while hello how are you as you guys know if you are new to my channel you may not know but if you are an OG then you know that I was pregnant okay I was pregnant so yeah you know I would say I took a I would say I took a maternity leave you know what I'm saying but I hope you guys have caught up on my vlogs and uh, you know all of those good things because I am doing some throwback Thursday videos which are just old content that I'm putting together putting out so I can kind of catch you guys up with my life <sighs> yes yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and put on my foundation and we'll get back into it, okay? So I'm going to use my cargo foundations that I have not used in so long. So super excited. These give some full coverage, honey, okay? So if you are looking for full coverage, this is the way to go. And these are the Cargo Cosmetics Swimmable Foundation. I believe I did a video on that. If I did, I'll put it up here. I'll link it somewhere over here but yeah these do some damage when it comes to coverage okay and I actually mix two colors I actually went to see the obstetrician I believe it was my 35th or 34th week of pregnancy and I was scheduled to go back to her my 37th week so that I can have my strep B test ran. And if you've never been pregnant, strep B is a bacteria that can be a bacteria that could be housed in a pregnant woman's, I believe, uterus or cervix or something like that. And you have to test for it because when you go into labor, you have to get antibiotics so that you won't spread that bacteria to your baby. Okay. So, I was scheduled to go back to her on the 27th week to get that test. But, you guys, the 27th week didn't come for me to go and see her, okay? It didn't happen. It just did not happen, okay? Saturday, it would be April the 18th, okay? Saturday, April the 18th comes around and I'm actually doing my hair, okay? I did some box braids and uh, yeah, I did some feed-in box braids. It was like 10 something at night. I'm like, okay, I'm getting done with my hair. I'm finishing up for the night and I just feel like a gush come out. And I was like, oh bae, I peed on myself. <laughs> like I literally was like I peed on myself okay now the reason why I said I peed on myself is because it was such a small amount of liquid and so I was like oh you know like I peed on myself like that's it you know my bladder's getting weak I'm getting you know further along you know so it's just my bladder leaking that's it right now I'm going to go in this is a kiss foundation stick and I'm just going to touch up in some areas where I just may want some more coverage so yeah you guys I was like oh you know it's just nothing major you know it's just to pee so I go to the bathroom and when I sit down you know like more it's like I, I do pee you know like I do use the restroom uh but then there's like more and I'm like gosh that's a lot of pee <laughs> now you have to take in mind I'm not thinking I'm going into labor I'm not thinking any of that you know what I'm saying like I'm 36 I was at this point I was 35 weeks six days because I turned 36 weeks on the 19th so it's the 18th and so I'm like um like it's not running through my head that oh you're going into labor so throughout that night 
it just keeps happening you know it just keeps happening and it's like I was filling up I filled up four huge maxi pads okay over the night four huge maxi pads and I'm thinking man I'm peeing a lot man this urine is just running out of me you know and still not thinking oh my goodness your water broke you know like still not thinking that like I'm still thinking that it's just urine the next day comes and it's not as bad but it's still like a little trickling happening okay there's still some trickling taking place all right and i'm going to do some concealer i am going to be doing my tarte shape tape concealer and this is in the color tan okay like i want to look bright you know what i'm saying like i want to look like I've gotten huh, eight hours of sleep. Something I haven't gotten in weeks and months. Okay. Back to the story. So Sunday comes and I text my doula and I'm like, I think it's like, I was so adamant. I was like, oh, I think it's P, but you know, I just wanted to make sure, you know, I just wanted to let you know. I'm like, you know, it smells, she was like, well, you know, and I was looking up, of course, I'm looking up articles like, oh, what does it, you know, if it did your water break, like, what does it smell like? What it smell like urine or like what, you know? And so I'm obviously, I've already looked up articles. I've already looked up articles and um, she was like, it could be a number of things. It could be amniotic fluid. It could be, urine you know and I'm just like oh my goodness like uh and take in mind this is now Sunday morning okay this is Sunday morning my son you know he was still moving it was like no big deal but one thing I did notice like over that night is that I was a little crampy okay I was a little crampy it wasn't crazy crampy but it was, you know, a little crampish, okay? And so, you know, this is Sunday. She was like, okay. She was like, well, you can call triage at the hospital and, you know, ask them what they think. Or, you know, you can wait until tonight to see how you feel. So, my plan was to wait until that night like that was my plan i was going to wait until sunday night okay that's what i was going to do and just go from there you know i mean i wasn't nervous i wasn't feeling bad you know so i i mean i wasn't concerned i was not concerned at all so taking mind i'm texting her this is April 19th, Sunday, April 19th morning. So maybe like eight, you know, eight in the morning, something like that. Okay. I'm going to set first, then I'll bake. It's nine, you know, and, and, you know, I'm not concerned, I'm not worried, but I was like, oh, should I call the hospital now? Like something was just like, call the hospital and this was around when I actually made the decision to call the hospital it was probably around 10 uh or 11 o'clock between 10 and 11 o'clock so let's just say 10 30. um I was like let me call the hospital and see what I should do at this moment like I need advice because at this point like I mentioned I'm not there's not a lot of fluid still coming out but it's still like a little bit just a little bit Okay, so I'm gonna look a slight little bake. Okay, so um, my son is crying in the background, so I'm trying to focus. Focus, 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 focus. Like I mentioned, I made the decision to call the hospital around 10, between 10 and 11 o'clock. Well, I talked to the nurse and she's like, uh, she's like, it could be amniotic fluid. And I'm like, 
what? You guys, when she said that, my heart literally dropped, okay? I just did not think in a million years it could be amniotic fluid. Like, I'm 36 weeks. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, he may come a little early, but uh, it'll be 38 weeks. You know, like, it's not going to be 36 weeks. So, you guys, she was like, well, I want you to come in just to make sure. And I was like, okay. And she was like, so how quick can you get here? And I was like, oh, well, can I, can you give me an hour or so? And she was like, oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. At this point, I'm just like, oh, my goodness. I mean, any woman that's pregnant, if you've been pregnant before, you understand this. Like, you know, you think, okay, yes, I'm going to, you know, make it to full term. Like, you, you never think that you are going to go into labor as early as 36 weeks and then some people go into labor even earlier than 36 weeks so it's like you never think that like you just never think it so you guys after I got off the phone I just broke down crying I mean I just broke down because I was like oh my goodness like I could be like I could be having a baby <laughs> like today or tomorrow or you know like you just don't know at this point you don't know what even that day you know it was Sunday April 19th like you don't know what that day holds you know like I just didn't know what that day held so I was just like oh my god you know like oh Jesus Christ you know you know, when you just aren't expecting something, I feel like a bit of fear creeps in. You know, like just a tad bit of fear creeps in. And you guys, I was crying and my husband was like, you know, it's okay. You know, it's okay. We don't know if it's amniotic fluid yet. And I was like, but she said that more than likely it is. Uh, you know, he was like, well, you know, we got to do what we got to do. And I mean, I just love how... In my times of weakness, in my times of fear, my husband can be my strength. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I'm a very faithful person. Like, I live off of my faith. And, you know, I believe that, you know, God will always provide for me. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstance. I always believe that... The outcome will always be what's best for that time, you know. And so, but in that moment, I was I was just very unsure, very just, you know, fearful, you know, fearful. Fast forward, we get to the hospital, and at this point, it's maybe 1230-ish, almost 1 o'clock. And so we get to the hospital and because of COVID, okay, because of COVID, my husband couldn't come up with me. So I had to go up alone and go into the hospital. And just a little side note, I work in the hospital that I had my baby in. So it's very comforting. It's very comfortable. You know, I'm not like a fish out of water here. I know where I'm going. Um, I know the people because my boss is actually executive director over the unit. So, I mean, I know the people. It's, it's not like a fish out of water, but still, I'm unsure. I don't know what what's going to happen, okay? I just do not know. But one thing I did know is, like, even when I was on the phone with her, she mentioned inducing me. Now, throughout this whole thing, what made me more nervous than anything was the induction. Like, it wasn't me possibly being in labor. It wasn't any of that. It was that I possibly would be getting induced. And me, I wanted to have a natural birth. And so, induction is not natural. But it's like, hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? I mean, what's happening is happening and there's nothing I can change. Uh, I had to go up alone. When I got up there, they knew who I was, obviously, because I called. 
and I got up there I had to take my clothes off obviously I was in triage and triage in the hospital for you guys who may not just know um, healthcare terminology is a place where it's almost think about it like you're on hold you know like they're just figuring everything out they're trying to see what's going on and to see if you know they should admit you so I go to triage and of course they have to run a test to see if it's amniotic fluid or not okay so that's the whole thing if it's amniotic fluid then I'm getting admitted I mean that's just that I'm getting admitted I'm getting induced and if it's not then I just go back home okay they had to reach up there in order to get like a sample of the fluid whatever this is okay and so she was like wow you are really wet down there and I was like uh, okay and you know it's like this whole time she was just kind of like kind of hinting at it's amniotic fluid you know she's like okay well I'm going to get this test in and you know we're going to see what it comes back so with my hospital and plenty of other healthcare systems have this where it's called my chart where you can automatically see your test results once they are complete and for me I saw it before she even saw it and she mentioned that that's a possibility that that would happen so uh, I see you know the test result and it's like positive for amniotic fluid I sunk like I sunk again I mean, I just could not believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just could not believe that, like, it is time. It is here, you know? And there were so many things running through my head because at this point, I'm 36 weeks. And I'm thinking, oh, I have at least two more weeks left, you know, four more weeks, you know? And we didn't have a car seat yet. We didn't have a stroller yet. We didn't have his bassinet yet. And the bassinet was already purchased, but it was en route. So we did not have the bassinet, didn't have the car seat, didn't have a stroller. And you know, in order to leave the hospital, you obviously have to have a freaking car seat. <laughs> okay, you have to have that. In order to go home with the baby, you have to have a bassinet, something for the baby to sleep in. So I'm like, oh my goodness. So all these things are running through my head, you know, I'm just like, we're not prepared. Like, we are not prepared. Like, obviously, we're ready, like, mentally, obviously. But when it comes to, like, just the the tangible things, I'm just like, oh, my goodness. We are not ready. You know what I'm saying? And so, I'm like, wow. So, I text my husband, and I'm like, it's positive and my best friend you know she was also checking up on me so I was communicating with her as well I was communicating with my mother like it was just a lot going on my husband was communicating with his parents and you know I'm just like I was just crying I called my best friend and I was telling her after I told my husband you know he had to bring everything up and another thing is that like I had my hospital bag ready but it wasn't like packed packed you know like i had some items but it wasn't fully packed so before we even left like just having to go through packing and all that kind of stuff you know things that when you're pregnant you think about and you research and you look up all these things that you you have to do you, that you need to prepare before you have your baby you know what i'm saying and i didn't have some of those things so i was definitely not feeling prepared and that's to me is not a good feeling <laughs> you know and it took a lot of mental strength for me in that moment to understand that hey everything is going to be okay you have to believe in the lord you have to believe that he will never leave or forsake you you know like i'm going through all these things but at the same time i'm like wow I am about to go into labor. You guys, I didn't bring my birth plan with me. My doula couldn't come because of COVID. So it was just my husband. 
And so it's just all of these things, all of, all of these different things, all of these different emotions. And going back, you know, to what I was saying, I was on the phone with my best friend. I was just crying, like breaking down, crying, crying, crying. And the nurse came in and she was like, what's wrong? You know, like, what are you, what are you scared of? And what is, you know, what's your concerns? And I was like, you know, I want to have a natural birth. And I was like, I'm going to have to get induced. And I was like, I want to make sure that it is as natural as it can be. Because you guys, we all know, okay? You go to the hospital, you have to get induced. They're trying to be on their time. They're not concerned about you. They're concerned about them. And then they say, oh, we're concerned about the baby. Are you really? Or are you just trying to get me the hell up out of here? You know what I'm saying? So I broke down, my husband come up. I'm just like, oh my goodness. I mean, so now that it's confirmed that it is amniotic fluid, now I have to get my strep B test ran. So at this point, obviously that next week is when I was supposed to get my test done. So now it's like, I don't know if I have strep B or not, you know, and I'm now in labor or, you know, not active labor, but I'm now, my water's broke. So there is a possibility that if I do have strep B, I'm passing it to my child. You know what I'm saying? So, oh God, they get that test done. Now that test, I believe is like a little more advanced of a test. And so it takes a little bit more time for it to process. So I didn't even get my results back for that. I don't even know, like, I was in the labor and delivery room before I even knew if I had it or not. They automatically put me on antibiotics just because if I do have it, you know, they just want to make sure that, you know, they started early, okay? At the hospital, the labor and delivery floor is at the top of the building, so it's the 10th floor, beautiful scenery, and you know, I'm just sitting there, and by this point, I'm like, okay, you know, it's going down today. Like, I am going to be seeing my son today, tonight or tomorrow morning. Like, it's like, wow, you know? And I'm like, wow, it is about to happen, nah. you know? <laughs> so, you know, we are on this floor and, you know, I'm getting my Pitocin started. And, you know, one thing that I was, I was, like I mentioned, I was nervous about getting induced because I've heard that when you get induced, it makes the contractions worse. And take in mind now, I am going in, getting it done naturally, okay? So, me wanting to do it naturally and knowing that this makes it worse, it's not something that I want to go through, period. You know, like I don't want it to be worse than what it naturally would be. So, you guys, I get started on that and they go up two units every hour. It's either every hour or every 30 minutes or something like that. One great thing, let me even, you know, back up, you know, when she was, when the nurse was asking me, what are you nervous about? What are you scared about? And I was telling her and she was like, it's okay. And after that, you know, they had to check my service to see how thin I was. They had to check and see how dilated I was. And you guys, I was a hundred percent thinned out. Okay, my cervix was 100% thinned out and I was already dilated one centimeter. So it was reassuring. It was like God was reassuring me saying, hey, he is ready. He is ready to come. Your body is ready. Your body is doing what it needs to do naturally and it's going to be okay. So for me to know that I was already one centimeter dilated and that I was completely thinned out, that says a lot and she was like you have a lot of things going good for you she was like you know some usually it takes hours for you know women's service to thin out she's like it's this thick and you have to go from this thick down to that you know and i was like wow you know like thank you lord thank you lord and so she is continuously you know going over the pros for me and I'm like, okay, 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 you know? And just reassuring me that, hey, everything's gonna be okay. We're gonna compromise. 
we're going to meet in the middle we're still going to ensure that you are getting the experience that you want but we're also going to do our job and make sure that you and baby are safe and i was like okay great you know that's all i want to hear fast forward you know i'm in the room and put me on potato and start me on two okay and i wanted to know how it worked like first of all i don't want this <laughs> So I definitely want to make sure that, you know, I understand, you know, how this all works. My boob is leaking, you guys. Oh my goodness, story of my life. Like I mentioned, I wanted to make sure that I understood Pitocin, how they administered it, how often they administered it, and when they would stop administering, okay? And it wasn't bad, like, at all, you know? Like, I mean, I felt like little cramps, but that's about all I felt, was just like some little cramps here and there. And then, you know, she started increasing it. So the best thing about my body during this whole situation is that my body was really doing its own thing and the Pitocin was just there to, you know, guide it along, okay, guide it along. And so for Pitocin, that's why I mentioned the two units, you know, you can either need a little or you can need a lot. And that's one thing that I wanted to add, that I was asking to clarify, because like, they only do it so much until your body starts obviously progressing, but is in a good place to continue on alone, let's say that, okay? So you can go up to 20 units of Pitocin. And just at the end, just to let you guys know, I only did eight units. So that is absolutely amazing that I only had to do eight units. And that made me feel good too, because it lets me know that it was a low dose. Like I didn't need too much, you know, like my baby was ready and my body was doing what it needed to do in order to get, you know, to get him here. So that made me feel really, really, good about just everything and what was you know going on yes. mm. ah, you know labor for me you know it was progressing so well I was breathing so well and I practiced breathing before I went into labor obviously it's something that I really wanted to be in touch with and I feel as if, you know, me personally, I'm a spiritual person and I'm all about Zen and peace. And so, you know, it, this may be kind of strange, but when I used the restroom and I had to do, you know, like number two, you know, or even when I was on the restroom and if I felt a little stress or a little tense, you know, I would make sure I breathe. I would always, You know, and breathing really does help you during labor. And you know, you hear people say that, and I heard people say that, and obviously I believed it, but experiencing it for myself is like, yeah, like breathing makes or breaks your labor experience. And as it got more intense, you know, I breathed, I breathed through it. And I, you know, I had a doula, she wasn't there, but we did meet and I went through different positions and things like that. So I knew different positions to do. I went into the tub, I rolled around the ball and I could not lay in the bed. I laid in the bed for maybe the first hour maybe. And I was gonna try to take a nap, it didn't happen, okay? The nap did not happen. I had to get up. Sitting down during labor is the worst thing a woman can do. And I know some women get epidurals and it, no matter how you bring your child into this world, you know, you brought your child into this world. If it's cesarean, if it's, you know, by uh, via epidural, if it's natural, it doesn't, you still birth your child. My personal opinion, I don't see, and when women have epidurals, you can't feel it. But when you are naturally, giving birth and you let's say before you even got the epidural like being in the bed i could not i had to get up and move i had to move around i was standing up i was you know and 
I don't know if I'll insert a clip here, but I will have a kind of vloggy mom, child, you know, mom, baby, family kind of vlog where I will show you, you know, how I was standing up, you know, and I couldn't be still. And even when I was in the tub, like the tub was nice, you know, uh, but I couldn't sit in there for a long time. You know, I maybe sat in there for maybe 20, maybe 20, 30 minutes, maybe, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe I sat in there that long, but I had to be active in my labor. Like I could not sit still at all. Like I just could not sit still. I had to be active. I'm highlight you guys. I have not highlighted in so long. I just could not sit still and I was up I was moving I was rocking and you guys the feeling of labor when people I, one big reason why I wanted to have my baby natural is because I wanted to know how it felt I was so excited my entire pregnancy to see how it felt and when I told people that they looked at me like I was crazy and I'm like yeah it may sound crazy but I want to know how it feels. So when someone comes to me and asks me, how does it feel? I can tell them, okay? How does labor feel? To me, it felt like, okay, I don't know if you guys, I'm sure everybody has done it before, but it felt like you've held your, your pee for a very long time. And it's just like about to come, like you have to use the bathroom, like both one and number one and number two, okay? It just felt like, you've held it for so long and if you've ever had a number two that is the result of like food poisoning or you know it's like three number twos in one you know it felt like that like it just felt like a whole bunch of pressure it felt like i needed something to exit and that was my child but the feeling like i didn't feel like my pelvis was stretching from here to there like i didn't feel it wasn't a joint pain for me it was more of a pressure down in the lower area you know and you guys i remember let's say i think i you know started i would start my active labor around three o'clock on the 19th of april and you guys in like an hour or two i was already at three centimeters and then at like I believe the third or fourth hour because I'm not sure if it was two or three hours it may have been less than that actually um let's say the first two hours I went from one to three and then um like that third hour I was stalling like it was like between three and four you know she was like you have to relax through your contractions and I can tell that I was like tensing up and this is when I was like kind of still in the bed well I had gotten back in the bed I believe but like I can feel myself tensing up you know I can feel my body not being relaxed and being tense and so I was like okay you have to relax your body because you guys I was looking at the clock and I was like I do not want to be in labor all day you know like you know you have women who are in labor for hours for hours and hours and hours like 24 hours and I was like uh-uh uh-uh I was like, I don't have time to be in labor that long, okay? I'm like, uh-uh, I need to relax. So my whole goal from that point on was to relax. Try to relax as much as I can and not tense up. And so you guys, I would say that fourth and fifth hour, I had went from three to four centimeters to like six to seven. And I would say labor got real around seven centimeters that's when i start to go into myself that is when the exterior was nothing like it was nothing okay i was very into yourself into myself and when you go into labor and you start getting closer to having to push your baby out it is such a spiritual experience you know it's like you're there but you're not there like i could hear everything 
you know, I could talk, I could list, I can do anything. But I was very much so within myself. I did not want to really, I didn't want to hear music. I didn't want people to talk to me. I was very in tune with myself, very in tune with my breathing. And I think that's very important when you're in labor is to understand that you need your time to be in tune with you. You need to be in tune with yourself and you need to make that a priority. You have to make that a priority that you are in tune with your body and with you, you know? Uh, you can have people outside of you helping you. And my nurse was amazing. My husband did a great job, but you, okay? You have to be strong and you have to be mentally there, mentally aware of what's going on, mentally aware of your goal and your end goal. Um, it was very spiritual for me and I mean, Ooh, by the time I got into, by the time I got to eight, nine centimeters, my body was pushing. I didn't expect for my body to push like that. I mean, your body is naturally going to push your baby out for you. Like you are not, like you don't need to push. I mean, you obviously have to push but your body naturally pushes for you. And you guys, when I got to nine, eight, nine centimeters and my body was pushing for me, that was the most mentally strong I've had to be in my entire life. I mean, in my entire life, you guys, because let's say I did that six times, right? My body tried to push itself six times and I had to stop because number one, at eight centimeters, I'm not at nine yet. So me pushing could make my cervix swell. And so I couldn't push. I had to hold that push in. And that is the most difficult thing ever to ask a pregnant woman while she's in labor. Hold that in, you know, like your contraction is pushing but you have to hold it in, you have to hold it back. And you know, the doctor that was delivering me, he made me feel so comfortable. He made me, he reassured me that everything was going to be okay. And you guys, just a little tidbit about, you know, the formation of my womb. I had a double lobe placenta, I had two lobes. And if you know a regular placenta, it's usually one lobe and then you have the umbilical cord that comes out of placenta. Plus, like, it wasn't covered by the placenta. The um umbilical cord was not covered by the placenta. So, there's a lot of risk there. You know, it could rip out of the placenta while he, after I give birth. Uh, it could have lack nutrition to my baby and my baby couldn't have gotten en enough nutrition. So there's a lot of things that could have, and I didn't find out I had that until I was like 34, 35 weeks and it was crazy. I would say 33 weeks. I was like, why didn't nobody ever tell me about this? You know? Um, but God is good, right? Back to the labor part. Um, so let's say six times. I had to hold back three times, I would say, for my baby not to come in. And the nurse was like telling the doctor, like, you better come on or this baby's gonna come out. And even when he got in the room, she was like, hey, you may wanna hurry up. Like, the head was right there. Like, you guys, it was crazy, you guys. It was crazy, okay? But all in all, my baby boy was born healthy. He was born five pounds, 11 ounces. So he was a little, little, little boo-boo. Uh, he was 19 inches long. So he was pretty long, okay? For being born, you know, at the gestational age that he was. And you guys, it was so many people in that room. That's one thing I remember. It was like 10 people, you know, because obviously I'm a 36 weeker. And so I am classified as a uh, late preem, preemie. Uh, so yeah, and he was born, I mean, he is so healthy, you guys. And you know, when babies are born that early, they have concerns about, you know, breastfeeding. I mean, he breastfed, 
he's doing great. He's breastfeeding now. He's doing great. Um, and you know, when you first have your baby, they are going to lose a little bit of weight in the first, you know, week or so, first couple days and week. And then by two weeks, they want them back. He was back up to his birth weight and over his birth weight in two weeks. And at his two month appointment, he was 11 pounds. I mean, he is growing. Okay. He's a little chub chub. So he's growing so well. And you know, he is now about three and a half months and uh it's just such a great thing to know that he came into this world and we weren't prepared but god prepared everything for us and i'm just so blessed and i feel so you know i'm so happy everything turned out well and that my baby was healthy you know all in all that's all i wanted i just wanted him to be healthy and arrive here healthy and he did that okay he did that honey and so you know i just i'm just so blessed and you know he's now in daycare i'm back to work i mean it's just crazy how time flies like i mean it flew so quickly and even my pregnancy you know my pregnancy was I feel like my pregnancy went by very, very quickly. Um, you know, like nine months is nothing. You know, I thought I was going to be, be able to experience that, oh my God, like, can this baby hurry up and come out? <laughs> you know, and even when I was 36 weeks, you know, I didn't feel like, oh my goodness, like, I can't wait till he get here. Like, uh, I feel like I'm about to explode my body, you know, that you hear a lot of women complain about. Uh, I didn't have that complaint, complaint at all. I, that's not a complaint that I had. But, but yeah, so he's here. He's doing so well. You guys will see him. He'll make his, you know, channel debut. But, you know, he's doing great, you know. He's, he's doing awesome. And yeah, so I'm going to, let's finish up this face, you guys. That is the story of, that's my labor and delivery story with a little bit of information and insight into my pregnancy. But yeah, uh, if you ever, you know, a couple things I have, if you're pregnant or looking to be pregnant, don't focus on the things that really, you know, don't focus on what you have to do to prepare so much. I was so into getting my hospital bag ready. I was so into getting his diaper bag ready. I was, I was so into, you know, all of the things that at the end of the day does not matter. Because when I went to the hospital, they had everything I needed. No lie. I feel like what I packed, the only thing that I used out of the bag, out of my hospital bag that I took was the clothes that I wore. And I wore one depend, you know, at, for postpartum, but what they had was better. They had witch hazel pads. They had um, the spray, you know, for your, for your healing. They had pads, they had little underwear. They had the little um, squirt bottle for you to clean yourself. I mean, they had everything that I needed. I got a little care package, I got chapstick, I got lotion. Um, and someone from my husband's job, they gave me pretty much like a hospital bag gift. And you know, it was, I'm, I'm so blessed that I received that because I already had like a to-go brush and toothpaste. All I had to do was literally throw that in my bag. Uh, and other little things like face wipes and you know other things that you may not think about that you may want but I wouldn't put a lot of energy into that because at the end of the day you're gonna go to a place that is made for you to have birth and they're gonna have everything you need so the things that I was concerned about there was no need to be concerned my husband my second day out of postpartum he went and got you know a car seat and he went and got you know, a bassinet and things like that for him. 
So, you know, we was able to go home and everything was great. You know, everything worked out how it was supposed to work out, you know? And, you know, what happens, happens, right? What happens, happens. And that whole experience, I'm trying to hurry up because my battery is dying, but that whole experience really grew my faith. And I'm already a strong and faith person, but it grew my faith even more because in times of uncertainty, which we all go through multiple times in our life, okay? But in times of uncertainty, God is always there. He will always provide, always. Everything will always work out for your good. And I think that's something, you know, that we have to believe that everything will work out for my good. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, but it will work out for my good. So, yeah, that is, you know, what I wanted to share with you guys. And I just wanna say thank you guys so much. We still stayed here throughout all of this. And you know, if you, uh, just thank you for supporting me and being part of the MDD family. And I will talk to you guys sooner than you think. And don't forget to check out my previous vlogs, my previous videos, you guys. I have more content coming out because I want to capture my little boo-boo's life and you know, I want to get back into my hobby, which is creating and putting out content. You know, I feel like even as a mom, you know, you have to make sure that, and it's, I think it's even more important that you have to, when you're a mother, is that you have to make sure you don't lose who you are. You don't lose your passions, you don't, you don't lose your loves, you know, and that you focus on you too, you know, you, yeah, you have a baby, you know, and you have other responsibilities, but you also have you and you have to look out for you too. And so, yeah. And so, yeah, smooches booze. And I'll see you guys on my next video. Cue the music.